The seasons of New Orleans are oysters, crawfish, crab, and shrimp. We do a kind of southern twist on food we really enjoy. We try to make sure everything we do is grounded in some way in South Louisiana, whether it be an ingredient or a technique. It's just kind of balancing what your vision is as a chef and then making sure that also translates to the guests. I'm Kristen Essig. And I'm Michael Salsvis. And we're at Coquette in New Orleans, and this is where Hollywood eats. When people walk out of a restaurant, I want them to feel as if they are leaving an extension of their dining room or their living room. It's the kind of space where, for example, Oprah joined us a while back and no one bothered her at all. I think we're more of a refuge for them than anything else, and I think that's a fantastic opportunity. I mean, I think everybody just needs a break. If you would like to come back, Oprah. <laughs> yeah. I think we both recognize that we complement each other really well. Working together, creating something that we are both really happy with, but that neither of us would have come up with on our own. I like to say we're partners in life and love. And we learn from each other quite a bit. You know, he'll, he'll contribute a flavor profile that I hadn't thought of or a textural component that I had not thought of before. And it ends up being a really layered dish, and that's how a lot of our dishes come through at Coquette. It kind of looks like squid ink or pasta, but it's not. We burn scallions on a grill. We dehydrate that, puree it, incorporate that into our pasta. It's just a fun flavor because it's still got like that oniony sweetness to it, but it's got a nice like bitter finish and it like rounds out really nicely. Uh, a couple little changes today. We have the duck wings are off. Gumbo's the same. Everyone's still digging the gumbo? Good. The reason we did the smaller menu is we can constantly change it as we need to and not feel like beholden to a certain ingredient. That's the best part about having these purveyors down here. Hi, Steve. We work with them every season to say, hey, we would like to see this, this, or this, or, you know, we've never had this before. Can you try growing this here? Could that be any bigger? That's a big Brussels sprout. <laughs> Baby cabbages. We'll use these on the head cheese today. It's part of the dish. We are so privileged to have this year-round growing season, practically. It's almost silly to not take advantage of the fact that they've got amazing turnips or amazing carrots or strawberries. How about those radishes? Having those kinds of relationships are really important. They're mostly small families, and we get the ability to interact with them and be a part of their life, which is great. I like people to be surprised when they get food, hopefully in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> This is hogshead cheese with bowfin roe and shaved Brussels sprouts. Hogshead cheese is not cheese. It is actually pig's head that we cook down or simmer overnight, and we take all the meat off of it, and then we form it back into a terrine. In this case, we're then cutting into cubes and deep frying them. We shred everything off, ears, tongue, everything comes out. It's gonna have this like really gelatinous, creamy oh, inside. Extra. It then gets mixed with some cooked mirepoix, carrot, onion and celery. We're pairing it with sort of like a creamy grabiche. So grabiche is a classic French egg salad. So we emulsify the um, hard cooked yolks into the base, which is a mayonnaise base. We pair it with a little bit of fermented Brussels sprouts and then fresh Brussels sprouts. Really just adds just the right amount of funk. Then we top it after it's been fried with some bowfin roe. So bowfin roe is like a Louisiana caviar. It really rounds out the dish. The, the hog's head is really fatty and very assertive. So this kind of just brings like a nice, like sweet salinity to the dish. This is actually one of my favorite dishes. So I think the thing that inspires me the most about cooking and working and living in New Orleans is that it's such a culture that you actually participate in. You know, it's, it's not something that you watch, it's something that you join in. You don't just watch a second line go by, you are in the second line, get in there, dance. You know, you participate in it and you get out of it what you put into it. And that's what's really fantastic about New Orleans. You can take as little as much as you want away from it, but you have to participate. I always try to take a moment in the middle of service to walk through the front door in the middle of service and see what it feels like and be like, wow. It's a really fantastic thing to see people enjoying what you do. I know, I love the bowfin roe, but the pasta is super flavorful. Um, I like the gumbo with the potato salad. I really like the fact that, you know, we become a part of our diners' lives. This is Bennett, he's now a doctor. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. Like, I almost want to go to the hospital, like almost. <laughs>